Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's raining again. What a surprise. I'm going to go down the windy roads today. Oh, there's not much about. We're still in lockdown. The uh, health minister yesterday said in Parliament that <coughs> you shouldn't be going out unless you definitely can't work from home. And I definitely can't work from home. So <coughs> let me just have my morning cough and get the windscreen wipers on. I think the biggest problem this country's got is not COVID. Is that I think we're, we're going to be like it's like Noah's flood. I think we're going to be flooded soon. I don't think we should be building a vaccine. We should be building arcs. But uh, anyway, how are you? All right? Okay. I hope you're well. We've got a. Uh, nice day always have a nice day always have a nice day to look forward to even when I was working really hard when I was young I used to enjoy it you know you've got to enjoy it the problem is that sometimes you won't have so much in the way of uh, uh, control over your job if you're a dentist if you're working as an associate or something you know, but uh, I worked as an associate for my 40 years. I worked for sort of two, three years as an associate. And, and you know, it was <coughs> due to a massive and possibly uh, <laughs> overconfident uh, belief in my own ability, I decided after a year or two that I could easily run a surgery and, uh, and that was my ambition. So that's what I decided to do. And then I've been a, a principal ever since. But uh, at the moment I'm working, I take Thursday off. Well, that's not strictly true. What I do is, I, I, Thursday's the last day I book up. And I don't work Friday afternoons. So I book up Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday morning. And then, um, and then, uh, so, and then if we if we've got having a stonking week and we've got so many patients booked in, then I will book up Thursday. But it's also available. For example, uh, we had a leak on our steriliser, and it needs a service. And so, uh, Lou, my nurse, was able to say to the guy don't worry come in Thursday morning you know we've got no patients and if we've literally got no patients then we both neither of us comes in uh, although I do still answer the phone and book people in and deal with emails and take payments and stuff like that so our new method of um, invoicing people for their treatment in advance is is doing an excellent job of flushing out people who uh, insist on reserving the right to cancel uh, at extremely short notice or not turn up. The people who believe that they, they should have the right to basically let us down by, by just uh, not coming in or ringing us up in the morning and saying they don't feel well or whatever, those people have vanished. And uh, <clears throat> it's not like all my patients have vanished. You know, I mean, they have, uh, for the most part, embraced the idea. And they have I think they've embraced the idea a bit because they like coming to the practice. And so if you're like a good dentist and you're doing, providing a service, which is pretty much exactly what the consumers want, then uh, price or, or the odd quirkery, it, it seems to have a very low effect, you know? If you're not giving them what they want, uh, then you'll get all sorts of pushback and, and won't even be able to give the service away for free sometimes. So, we have a, we have a, 
our software system set up so that every time a course is completed, uh, the patient is sent an email that says, um, will you write us, uh, can you just uh, give us like, answer two questions. One is, give us a score out of five, and then there's a box saying, is there anything you know, you'd like to say? Uh, you know, how could we improve? And I wouldn't say everybody does it, but over time we, we've picked up a load. And if you go to our website, First Impressions, uh, there's either First Impressions, all one word, or 1st-impressions.dental, then um, you'll be able to see all our reviews and they are... Uh, I should really feature them a bit more prominently actually. I'll tell you why, because um, when we always ask patients two questions when they come in, okay, okay, this is gonna be a marketing podcast. So the first question we ask them is, who normally does your teeth? And listen very carefully to the phraseology because uh, that's been honed over 40 years, all right? To be exactly the right way to say the question in order to get the answer that you want. So we asked it, who normally does your teeth? So now in saying who normally does your teeth, you're sort of presupposing that the patient has someone who normally does their teeth. So that's in a way that's complimenting them. You're not you don't look at them and you say, you know, for Christ's sake, how long has it been since you've been to the dentist? You know that's what they're expecting, and and that's so that's precisely what you don't want to do. You know you don't want to embarrass people. So you give them the make give them the uh, satisfaction of assuming that they are uh, at least recognised that they do want to do the right thing. You know, and that they they probably do want to have a a regular dentist and be in regular care. And they will still give you the correct answer. They will still say, oh, well, you know, I have, to be honest, I've been for 10 years. Or, you know, I used to go and see an NHS dentist, but they were crap. Or my NHS dentist closed and I, you know, I know I need to go, or I've moved into the area or something. They'll always, and that's always useful. Now, you do not need to be anal about writing all this stuff down, okay? What you just need to do <coughs> is get an idea of what is what is going well and what is not going well uh, from from the new patients that are coming in what's working and what's not working okay so no, for, I'll give you a, a concrete for example I mean we had there was a practice around here called Churchill practice it was set up by the local commissioning authority when the NHS provision was rubbish so they decided to commission some surgeries directly and then there without realizing how much it was going to cost and so by the time that the uh, the surgeries had ordered uh, two CEREC machines they decided that perhaps funding a general practice was uh, was not uh, so clever you know so they decided to shut it down and when they shut it down we um, put adverts in the local paper saying that you know we are here sort of thing if you're as your dentist chart sort of thing not not as blatant as that but you know that was the sort of the implication and, and they fell completely flat on their ass. And the reason was that at that point, nobody really even knew that they'd shut or cared that they'd shut or thought they need to do anything about the fact that they'd shut. Whereas um, two to three years later, right, when people sort of woken up and thought, do you know what, I haven't had a checkup for a while. Oh God, my dentist is shut. My dentist, did you know my dentist? Is, yeah, yeah, they shut two years ago. And, or they've got toothache and they ring up and they, you know, or they, they're told by the local authority that they can go to another surgery, perhaps down, uh, you know, 20 miles away. And, uh, and then they ring up that other surgery and then all they get down the, down the phone is a lot of laughing, you know, hysterical laughter when they ask if they can register. And then, um, then they start ringing around and thinking, who else is local? So our, our, our advertising was sort of uh, not targeted correctly. But we only found that by asking people, you know, um, who 
normally does your tea. And then the other question we always ask a new patient is, how did you hear about us? You know, how did you find us? How did you find us, you know? And uh, <clears throat> that's obviously um, more geared towards making sure your marketing uh, is uh, effectively spent. So um, you will occasionally, if you're advertising on the radio, sometimes you'll say people have heard you on the radio or, but <clears throat> on the radio more people say, just people talking to you generally when you know when you sort of introduce yourself or just um, you're just talking to people and they say oh yeah you're a dentist I heard you on the radio I heard you on the radio well, they don't come they don't come to you it helps with brand awareness but the people who actually do are looking for a dentist right now who need one who are going to pay you money they are they tend to come through um, either word of mouth like somebody at work is going around saying how brilliant you are and so they told me I've got to go and see you or um, in the old days it was the yellow pages you know I saw your advert in the yellow pages but now it's Google now what they do is everybody Googles so nobody really uses Yahoo okay nobody uses Bing uh, they um, nobody uses Yell they all just go straight to Google and they put dentist near me and if you've got a site which is honest legal decent honest and truthful and not not you know just stupidly <coughs> over optimized and, and search engine optimization mad then you'll be in with the chance of Google recommending you and we um, my website let me just put my wing mirrors out Nice to be able to see who's on my six o'clock. These are all the lorries that are going, going to Dover, by the way. I'll take you the way that a lorry goes to Dover, okay? Dover is, is uh, relative to the car now, is at about uh, two, two o'clock. And now we're going along the north coast of Kent, pretty much, towards Margate. And then uh, from Margate to get to Dover, you have to sort of do a 90 degree right and then go down the east coast of Kent until you get to Dover. And this is the circuitous route that they're sending all these lorries. You can see foreign number plate lorries. So, yeah, so, um, so you say, like, how did you hear about us? And uh, at the moment, everybody's saying the same thing. And that's great, because if everybody says the same thing, it means you know, you really know where you can target your spending, right? And what they're saying is, it, uh, word of mouth, or I Googled, came up with your website, and I looked at your reviews, and your reviews, I was really impressed with your reviews. You've got some really good reviews. So that's why I decided to come along. And that's a human thing, isn't it? It's a group thing. It's, uh, you know, if you see, if you see uh, two restaurants and one's absolutely jammed and the other one's completely empty, um, you tend to, <laughs> logic would dictate, <laughs> you'd be able to get a table in the empty one easier, but you tend to want to go to the jammed one because it's uh, your peers are voting, aren't they? With their feet, with their, with their money. Uh, they're saying, they're telling you which is the best restaurant uh, just by volume. So, uh, so we've got a website. We've got tons of good reviews. There we are. Like so, on your right-hand side, ladies and gentlemen, and left, you've got Manston Airport. We're we're underneath the uh, approach. We're going driving through the approach lights to runway uh, one zero, which is aligned. Uh, magnetic 100 or roughly east and Manston is where they are storing the lorries so I'm not gonna I'll tell you what I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna try and get past this lorry because we're gonna follow him he's gonna he's gonna carry he's gonna go straight on and uh, I want you to show I want to show you where he's gonna go there he goes yeah, 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 get your 
exhaust fixed. So, where was I? Yeah, so, so, once again, the language, okay, first of all, if you're going to get a load of good reviews, uh, it's no use uh, telling your nurse to sit there with a pencil and paper and just write down anything nice that the patients say about you. What you do is you, you get them, you collect, you just collect the reviews. And the best, we found the best way to do it is to send them an email on the completion of their treatment and say, can give us marks out of five and uh, uh, what, do you, what did you think about the service? You know, was there anything else, anything we got wrong, anything we got right? And you know, it's true that someone saying <coughs> that you've got something wrong is almost more helpful than someone saying you've got something right because it gives you a chance to improve. Someone saying how wonderful you are is great and that brings in new business, but someone saying um, actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, nurse stepped on my toe or something gives them a chance to say to the nurse, don't step on the patient's toes. <laughs> so. And once again, the wording, the wording is critical, okay? And I can't emphasize this enough. You must constantly look at your written material and go back and read it. And I guarantee if you read it, you'll think, oh, there's a better way I could have said that. There's a clearer way I could have said that. There's a more succinct, a shorter way I could have conveyed that. And we read our letters all the time. Here we are now. This road, right, this tiny little road, Every single lorry that goes on the Dover Ferry comes up this road. This is the main road to Dover. And that's where everyone turns right and they're all going in. They're all going into the uh, sheds at the airport there and that's when their uh, their uh, HI, you know, their HG, what's it? Their um, coronavirus certificates are checked and, and then they're all taken in convoy down to Dover to be loaded on the boats. Anyway, a bit of a miserable job. And also, that there's a massive testing centre here. And uh, you might be able to see that. In fact, I'll see if I can... If I can show you that as I go past, I might. I'm getting more adventurous with the camera. Now we're doing this picture in picture. Which does take longer, I must add. Mind you, talking of which, I've got some CCTV at the... Um, farm today and um, there's the control tower on the left and uh, I found that someone had broken the lid on the wheelie bin yesterday and so we um, were able to check the CCTV and confirm it was the dustman that took away an intact bin and brought back a broken one so Uh, that's uh, paid for itself because um, they otherwise they charge you for a bin and say that you broke it. Now these all these tents and everything on the left here, on the right, these are all uh, uh, coronavirus testing tents. You can see the cars going in there to get tested, and that's all. These are all uh, drive-through uh, open open uh, tents where they drive the cars in and you wind your window down and uh, they talk to you on your mobile phone. Apparently you have to ring a number, they don't even talk to you. you, you uh, they hold a number up to the, uh, up to the window and then uh, they, uh, you have to ring them on a the mobile phone. And that's how you communicate. It's, uh, you know, you couldn't write it, you know, I mean, it's a sort of science fiction. So I was talking about wording and how, um, excuse me, I'm going to bring a glass of water for these things, I think, because this is an, or, yeah, a bottle of water or something. So, um, new houses on the left here, see? They've gone up in about three months. So, what, what you'll want to be saying is, um, please, please, will you help us out? help us out with a review all right because there are two things that you need to overcome two two uh, sort of types of resistance that you need to overcome with uh, surveys one is the inertia that stops people doing them and the other one is the you know you want to get them in the mood to give you a good review 
Um, <coughs> so by saying, you know, can you please help us out with a review, what you're doing is you're very subtly saying, give us a sort of review that would help us out. You see what I mean? So, and also, help us out by, you know, we've, we've taken a bit of time over you. Can you just give us, help us out with two minutes of your time to help us out with a review? And that phrase, help us out, I think I got from a local um, plumbing, plumbing supplies. I'm sure it's a plumbing supplier. It might be screw things or something. Anyway, they just had a sign up saying, please help us out with a, with a, a review. And I'm pleased to say that <clears throat> 97.6 of our reviews are five star. Uh, now we work hard to make sure everyone's, we have a very happy practice. Um, and we're not, we're not unlucky in that we're stuck in a system where we're not in control of the, sort of the levers that, that raise on lower patients, patient satisfaction. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have a 97.6% satisfaction level if I worked in the health service because I would be working in a way as, you know, that was dictated by the health service. And they don't care to make any difference to them what the satisfaction level is at all. Uh, so it doesn't sort of factor into their service level agreement. But, um, but just, uh, as I say, be uh, careful about the language. And then, <clears throat> so you said to a patient, how did you hear about us? And uh, who normally does your teeth and then and that's pretty much and also you know if you're going to go for the gold star don't sort of say it in a way that uh, uh, you know that you're trying to interrogate them you know you've got to sort of drop it into the conversation you've got to be it's almost like you've got to be you know that if you didn't ask them that question then there would otherwise be quite an awkward silence so you can just sort of sort of I like pretend to be reading their notes or something and say, um, so how did you find us, you know? And uh, they'll say, oh, I saw you on the website, you know, and, uh, but, and I really liked your reviews. And then we always make a joke along the lines of, oh, um, you know, well, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to delete a few of those because, um, to be honest with you, we, um, we like a quiet life, you know, and we don't, uh, so we don't really encourage patients. Yeah, and that makes them laugh or and we do always tell them that uh, our patients love us because uh, we only keep the lovely patients and that is true actually they, they laugh at that but that is true uh, if anybody's got an attitude or a bit of a chip on their shoulder or um, you know a tendency to micromanage me uh, or their treatment then we usually part ways, you know, on friendly terms, sometimes not so friendly, but um, we lo I love my job because I love my patients. My patients love me, I love them, and I, I only work every other day. I only work on Monday, I don't come in the next day because the, it's the hygienist. She works Tuesday, and then I work Wednesday, but I don't come in the next day because it's Thursday. And... Uh, Usually we have Thursday off, then I work Friday, and then I don't come in the next day because it's Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So I have a lovely life, but then I deserve to. I tell you, I've done more fillings than you buggers, so I, I should. There's no reason why I shouldn't calm down a bit. Anyway, nice to talk to you. I'll see you soon. Bye.